Praise ye the Lord. He is good for his mercy and do us forever. His truth is toward our generation. Great is his faithfulness. Glory to God in the highest peace, goodwill toward men here on earth. The Prince of Peace is our peace. The Counselor, he's our counsel right now. America needs you, God. The church needs you. The families of this nation need you. And we need you, Father, in Jesus' name. Demonstrate your power right now. Mm -hmm. I welcome the fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. I welcome the fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost because God, I know that nothing God that we would do is by ourselves in our own power, in our own strength, but everything is done by the spirit, say of the word of the Lord. I welcome the host of heaven. I welcome the divine help. I welcome the quality help right now. I welcome the divine relationship. I welcome the quality relationship in the mighty name of Jesus. I welcome the healthy relationship in the mighty name of Jesus. I welcome the promotion. I welcome the financial breakthrough. Come on, somebody. I welcome right now in Jesus name, divine health. I welcome right now, divine wealth in Jesus name. I welcome divine peace that surpasses all understanding. I welcome divine provision right now in the mighty in the name of Jesus, and I welcome the move of the Spirit of the Living God, the Holy Ghost. Shake up this place and move right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Well, bless the Lord, warriors of God. Numbers chapter 20, starting at verse 1. In the first month of the year, the whole community of Israel arrived in the wilderness of Zin, and they camped at Kadesh. While they were there, Miriam, the sister of Moses, died and was buried there. Mm -hmm. There was no water for the people to drink at that place, so they rebelled against Moses and Aaron. The people blamed Moses and said, if only we had died in the Lord's presence with our brothers, why have you brought the congregation of the Lord's people into the wilderness to die? <laughs> Along with all our livestock, why did you make us leave Egypt and bring us here in this terrible place? Mm. The land has no grain, no figs, no grapes, <laughs> no pomegranates, and no water to drink. Let's pause here for a moment. God has a reason when he shifts you from one direction to the next, from one city to the next, from one state to the next, from one relationship to the next, for his glory, from one ministry to the next. God has a plan. God has a purpose. Right now, I am sensing there are a lot of us that are in that transitional period in Jesus' name. My God, but count it all joy that we have been chosen for such a time as this to endure because the grace that we need will get through this. Somebody said, I'm going to make it. Come on. Mm. I'm going to make it through. We're going to get through this. We're going to get to the other side in the mighty name of Jesus. It seems like we are in a place where there is drought. There are no fruits. There are no vegetables. There are no rice. Come on, somebody. No couscous, no quinoa, no nothing, no potatoes. Come on, come on, come on. It's just saying everything is scarce and there are certainly no water. That's what the Bible says. There were no water for them to drink. So the people then decided they were better off where they were. You see, it may seem that we are comfortable where we have been and where we are and where we were. Mm. But God is shifting. He's pulling. He's removing. He is detaching and attaching. Come the Holy Ghost. And he's bringing us from the old into the new. And as he brings us into the new, some things in the old will have to stay in the old because it cannot come with us into the new. Mm. Ooh, I receive that revelation right now. Hallelujah. So do not try to hold on to the things that are in the old, the things that are behind. Leave them behind and press toward the mark of the price of the high callings. And And the Bible says, And Moses and Aaron turned away from the people and went to the entrance of the tabernacle. Why? Where they fell down on their face to the ground, on the ground. And then they... um. 
Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to them. You see, the people of God, those who have the mind of Christ, those with the spirit of the living God, knew how to get God's attention. Aaron and Moses said, we got to get away from all this negativity. We got to get away from all this complaining. Mm, why complain about something if you're not willing to do anything about it? Come on, somebody. Don't complain about the church if you're doing nothing to help the church. Don't complain about the government if you're doing nothing to help the government. We have been called to pray for those in authority. Don't complain about an election if you plan on doing nothing about it. My God, it is time that we take action when it comes to the things of God. It's time that we take action when it comes to things that pertain to our nation. And we have to pray always. Pray, 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 pray. Never get tired of praying. Come on, somebody. Mm. Because a nation that does not fear God shall be destroyed, but a nation that put God first, my God, shall be victorious in all that is does. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We need to dwell into the overflow of the anointing, into the overflow of the fire, into the overflow of the anointing oil in Jesus' name, into the overflow of the healing, into the overflow of the breakthrough. Hallelujah. I see we're going to be breaking through right now. We are breaking through this year in Jesus' name. Everything and anything that came at us, everything and anything that came to us, my God, that God is not happy with right now in Jesus' name, he's going to cause us to break right through it in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, God allows certain things for a certain time. And there comes a time where he says, this is it. I'm done. I no longer prove this. Pull my people out. Woo, glory to God. And I sense the Lord's going to be pulling some of us out. Amen for his glory and his purpose and so all the folks are complaining about what is and how nothing is right and everything is wrong but nobody wants to do anything about it the bible says that moses and aaron they fell my god their faces on the ground and they began to cry out to god in the glorious presence of the lord my god came into the place you want to get god's attention start to worship him you want to get god's attention get into his word you want to get god's attention start seeking Seeking him in prayer and fasting. You want to get God's attention, my God? Call on him while he is near. You want God to come and step into your situation and circumstances? You begin to seek him and put him first and everything else will have to fall into play. Even if they do not want to fall into place or not, they will have to succumb to the perfect will and purpose of God. Mm -hmm. Now that's a mouthful. So after they sought the Lord, the Bible says, and the Lord said to Moses, so first they had to seek God. And then after they sought the Lord, the Lord then made himself new. He came down to speak to them. This is why Matthew 7, 7 talks about asking. He says, seek and you will find knock and the door will be open unto you. When you seek God, you will find him. When I seek him, I always find him. Come on, somebody. When you seek him, you always find him because why? He promised that when we seek him, we will find him. So it's a guarantee that if we ask, it will be given. If we seek, we will find. When we knock, the door has to be open because he made us a promise and he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. My God, Holy Ghost, thank you for the fire that I'm feeling right now in Jesus Christ's most holy name. The Bible says, you and Aaron must take the staff and assemble the entire community as the people watch, speak to the rock over there. As the people are watching, as the nation is watching us, mm -hmm. as the church is watching us, as the people watching us, come on somebody, as the government is watching us, we speak to the rock. <laughs> We are going to speak to the rock. You know, Deuteronomy chapter number 32, starting from the 31st verse, going all the way down to verse number 35. The Bible talks about there is no rock like our rock. Our enemies will be destroyed. He says that vengeance is his. He's going to hurry up. And bring upon the wicked that which is rightfully theirs. He's going to speed it up. He's going to expedite it. He's going to have to cause it to happen suddenly in the mighty name of Jesus. All he's telling us to do, remain faithful and don't touch the rock. Because that rock is Jesus. On Christ, the solid rock, we are standing. All of the ground is sinking sand right before our very eyes. And we see these things by the grace of Almighty God. And we give him all the praise, the glory, and the honor. 
listen. As the people watch, he says, speak, speak. But I just don't want you to speak. I want you to make sure that they are looking because I want these people to know and see that I have called you. I have appointed you. I have anointed you. I have chosen you. I have set you apart. I am using you. My God. Mm -hmm. I'm not using you the way I'm using anybody else. I am using you. And I want these people to know. I want my God to respect the anointing that I have placed on your life. I want him to watch because I'm going to work through you. How I seek it? I'm so I receive that for me in Jesus Christ's most holy name. Bless the Lord. I'm excited for this revelation. He says now. As the people watch, speak to the rock over there and it will what? Pour out water. But don't just do it. Make sure the people are looking. Make sure the people are watching. You will provide enough water from the rock to satisfy the whole community and livestock. When you seek God, when we seek God, when I seek him, together when we seek him, there is no need that we have that he will not meet. No sicknesses or diseases that he will not heal in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. No aches or pain that he will not remove. <laughs> no depression or heaviness that will not disappear and come off immediately in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, there is no lack that will not disappear in Jesus' name. All he wants us to do is seek him because as they fell to the faces, the Lord said to them, I want you to take the staff. Now think about that staff, that staff that Moses had. And I believe in the Bible, it talks about somewhere in the book of Exodus that it was Aaron's staff that Moses used for the works of God to glorify God because the Lord allowed Aaron to be Moses' mouthpiece to speak. Come on, somebody help me. Holy Ghost. Mm. Woo, glory to God, bless his holy name. And so it was the very staff that Moses was instructed by God to put down on the ground that turned into a serpent. And it was interesting because it was the very staff that when all the magicians and the astrologers and the witches and the warlocks in the government of Egypt, can you imagine the government of Egypt had witches and warlocks and magicians and astrologers? My God, that tells you, there is nothing new under the sun. No wonder we see witches, warlocks, um, uh, magicians, and astrologers, you name it, all mixed up in the governments of the world today. Mm -hmm. But there is no witch more powerful than the blood of Jesus. There is no astrologer more powerful than the blood of Jesus. There is no magician more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ. And the name of Jesus Christ is above all these other names. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. So God instructed his servant after they had sought him. He said, speak to the rock. Make sure the people are looking and you will have enough, not only for yourself, but for your livestock as well. So the Bible says, so Moses did as he was told. He took the staff from the place where it, it was kept before the Lord. Then he turned, he and Aaron summoned the people to come and gather at the rock. You see, he's following some of the instruction because the Lord says, make sure the people are watching. Then he says here, he says, listen, you rebels. Now he's calling them rebels. He's calling the people rebels because what? They're rebelling against God. And we know that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft in 1 Samuel chapter 15. So they're rebelling against God. Why? Because they don't have their onions anymore, their rice and their meats and the pomegranates and the grapes and, 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 and what was that with the figs and the grains? They don't have all these things that they had when they were in Egypt because they find themselves in a new place. You said, God is going to take us out of the old, bring us into the new because the new is where the harvest is. Oh, glory to God. I received that. Oh, I received that. He's going to take us out of the old and bring us into the new because the new is where the harvest is. And we'll receive that now. Mm. Who I grab hold of that for me in Jesus name. Bless your holy name, Father. Oh, my Lord. Thank you, Lord, right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. He said, and Moses did. But here is the thing, though. As we continue to read in the next verse, I believe it's verse number 11. The Bible says that Moses raised his hand and struck the rock. God told he didn't. God didn't say anything about striking the rock. He says, gather the people and speak to the rock. You don't want to strike the rock because the rock is Jesus. You don't want to touch him. And you know what I, 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 I discovered today as a revelation? 
Jesus, the Bible tells us that he is the word of God. In the beginning, John 1 tells us in the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was with God in the beginning. The same was with God in the beginning. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. It is the same word that is the rock, the solid rock we are standing on. He is our firm foundation. And this is what upon this rock, Jesus Christ himself, he has built his church. And no matter who the devil in hell trying to come against the church, you better back the hell off with you because you're not going to succeed however you try to come against God's people and his church and his work oh my god you are fighting a losing battle because the battle is already won in the mighty name of Jesus you might as well drop your weapons and take off running because the bible says the wicked are running and nobody's chasing them now you go ahead and just go on right along right along right along in the mighty name of Jesus <laughs> Glory to God. So now he gathered the people, but instead of obeying what the Lord says, he's going to strike the rock. And as a result, God wasn't happy. God was not happy. So we're going to say to the church, the body of Christ, we're going to say to ourselves, the ministries, the community, uh, our towns, our villages, the, the viewers, the listeners, the watchers, the standbyers, the, the, the haters and the lovers. We say to everybody, don't touch the rock. Don't touch the rock. Do not touch the rock. You speak to the rock. You speak the word to the, oh my God. You speak the word to the rock because you imagine this. The word Jesus Christ, he is the word. So when you speak the word, you speak Jesus to Jesus. I love it. You speak Jesus to Jesus. He's got, he's got the answer. Why? Because he is the rock. He is also the word. And that's what the Bible says. Amen. Oh, whoo, let's bring this to a close. My God on today. And so uh when he she he 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 struck the rock, the Bible says the rock twice. Oh my god. He didn't just do it once, he did it twice. Now this kind of shows me that he was showing off a little bit. And that's the thing when when God elevates us, when he takes us from a place of obscurity, when he takes us from a nowhere, when he takes us from from a dry and an empty and a thirsty place and he brings us into that place of refreshing, that place of harvest, that place of nourishment. Don't don't get cocky. Don't don't get, you know, braggadocious. Look what I've no 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 don't do that. Remain humble because God gives grace to the humble. You know what he does with the proud? He resists them. That's just a, 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 a word of encouragement. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Let's finish reading this. So water gushed out. So the entire community. So the water came out after because God had healed Basie. He has to hasten to his word. He has to perform it. He said, gather the people. I'm going to give them water. He told his servants, speak to the rock. He said his servants struck the rock. Now the damage has been done. So, you know, the Lord, he's going to uphold his part of the bargain. He's going to literally do what he said he would do. He said he would give them water. Here is your water. Go ahead and drink. So they all were able to drink. The community was able to drink. But the man of God who disobeyed God had to suffer a consequence out of that. It says, but the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, both of them actually, because how many, we all know, guilty by association, right? When you hanging out with somebody, they get caught stealing and you happen to be with them, even though you didn't steal nothing, honey, you're going down with them. Why? Because guilty by association. This is why the Lord's going to bring us out of the old. There's some stuff and things we're going to have to leave behind. And and don't don't be, you know, sorry or, or pitiful. Oh my gosh, I'm going to miss them. I'm going to miss this. I'm gonna... No, 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 no. When God said, move, move. Don't stay there. Amen. I received that from me in Jesus' name. All right, let's bring this to a close. The Bible says, uh, the Lord, but the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust me enough, look at that, to demonstrate my holiness to the people of Israel. Now that's sad. That breaks my heart. He says, because you didn't trust me enough. How many of us don't trust God enough? We want to help him out. You know, Lord, you said you're going to do this, but it's just taking forever. Let me see what other means I can come up with and what other ways I can get this stuff done because it's just moving so slow. Because you did not trust me enough, says the Lord, to demonstrate my holiness to the people. God wanted to prove to the people that he is the one who's God. But instead, Moses goes and struck the rock twice. The people know that it was Yeshua, it was Yahweh, Jehovah, who helped them, who gave them the water. But he uses servant Moses. But God wanted to prove to them not only is he with Moses, but he is God. And he is the one that does all things for his people. Give him the glory. Just don't touch his glory. And don't, don't try to help God out. There is nowhere in the Bible where I seek where the Lord says, 
a creation is my helper. I've created you to help me to be God. No. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Psalms 121. My help is from the Lord. You see what you see? You see how that goes? He is our help. We are not his help. He's our help. Amen. Our help comes from him. This is so rich. And the Bible says, um, what does it say? It said, you will, oh, he wanted to demonstrate, excuse me, demonstrate his power to uh, the people of Israel. He says, you will not lead them into the land I am giving them. So because of disobedience, Moses and Aaron didn't get to see the place that God had promised, that promised land. However, their descendants did. But here is the other thing we must remember. We want to bring that to the church. It will behoove us to obey God in the small things. And when you can seem to understand what God is doing, there is no time to say, Lord, I'm going to try to figure this thing out for you because you're taking too long. Step back. Just continue to worship him, praise him, get in his word, thank him, thank him, bless him. I heard it said, if you can trace him, trust him, just trust him, trust him, trust him, trust him. Because I'm telling you, we can never come up with a better plan than God. We can never cause things to happen better than God. I always like to step back and say, Father, I don't understand this. I don't know all of this, the ins and outs of what's going on, but I know what part I need to play. And when I'm done playing my role, I'll step back, Father God, because you are God. And beside you, there is no other. As we bring this to a close, it says, verse um, number 13, this place was known as the Walters of Meribah, which means arguing, because this is where the people of God argue not only with Moses, but Moses then, of course, disobeyed God, because they're the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. argued with the Lord. Wow. They argued with the Lord. And there he demonstrated his holiness among them. They argued with God. Of course, Moses disobeyed God. And so that place today, Meribah, is known as a place of argument. We don't want the church to be known as a place of argument. We don't want, you know, our state to be known as a place of argument. And uh, we definitely don't want America to be known as a place of argument. We do not want our justice system, for sure, to be known as a place of argument where there is just there is just a constant tension of fight and real justice. I'm talking about real justice. It's not being seen, at least not yet. But I am confident. I know my word. I'm standing on the word. I'm confident that we will begin to see real justice, real justice in the church, real justice in our court systems across America, real justice in the United States Department of Justice. We will see that. Amen. I have no doubt because I know who the ultimate judge is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this moment in your word. So rich, so much revelation. Holy Ghost, thank you for helping us. Thank you for allowing us to see what it's like to obey you, Father. No need to complain if we can seem to understand all that you are doing. Help us to sit tight, trust you so that you can demonstrate your power through us in our favor, that all standing by, all watching, all seeing or knowing father god us will then say uh-uh this has to be god because i know these people there was no way that they would have been able to do this this has to be god and father we vow to give you all the praise the glory and the honor and this we ask in jesus christ's most holy name until the next time the lord be with you and also with me the Lord bless you and may you be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God so that we together will stand in these times and having done all to stand, continue to stand until the next time. Shalom.